Hi everybody, welcome. It's Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, so it's time for Stamping with Denise. Welcome. Hope everyone had a great Monday. Let's get, let me pull this up on the, pull you up on my computer, or pull my video up on my computer, so I can make sure I know what's going on. And, oops. Okay, trying something a little different with my phone set up and stuff like that. So I think it'll be working, hopefully so. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I did, it was really nice here in Michigan. We got a storm brewing that's supposed to hit tomorrow night and go into Wednesday, so that's okay. I'm ready for spring though. We're gonna do some more, we're gonna do some flowers, so I'm in the mood for spring. Um, last week, last couple weeks I've done some boxes and things like that. Last week I did this cute little box. You can see we used the tag topper punch and used a little brad, put the flowers in there. And the, if you share my, if you like my video enough and you share it so that your friends can see it, I entered you in a drawing to win the project I made during that week. And so Annette Timmons shared my video. And so I'm going to get her, make sure she gets this cute little box. Gets this cute little box. It's just so cute. See what that measurement is on that. That's about two inches square by an inch and a quarter deep. So it's a nice little box. Maybe cute for candy at Easter or something like that. So I will make sure she get the, and Anita gets her little box. I will see her soon. So um, I was looking at the calendar and we've only got about five weeks left of celebration. It's hard to believe that we're already that far into it. So tonight I am, I used it last week on the box, but we're gonna use the Thoughtful Bloom stamp set and the coordinating punch called Small Blooms that goes with it. You can get the stamp set for um, free with a $50 purchase and you can get the punch free with a $100 purchase. And that's before shipping and tax. So it's really versatile and it's so cute and I thought I would play with it again tonight. And so, um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to move the camera, put it up in the holder, or the phone, and we'll get started. So hang tight, close your eyes for a sec. Okay. Yeah, celebration ends the end of March. So, and stuff is already starting to sell out. Two things have sold out, the um, sequin and um, baker's twine packet, as well as the card kit has sold out. So, and I've actually got a little, I got extra of both of those. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I'm gonna do something special. Okay, so I told you we were gonna work, we were gonna use the Thoughtful Blooms and the small bloom, and we're gonna do this. I think this, I like this card, it makes me feel good. I love all the bright, cheery colors. So um, I thought that the that it looked like a good, nice get well card. So we are, I mean, really you could put any sentiment on it you want. It could be a birthday, a thinking of you, get well, whatever. Um, when we make the card, we're gonna stamp right on the um, cardstock. I had not intended for this to be raised, but initially I'd put the sentiment in pool party, and then after I got the rest of the card put together, I didn't like it. So rather than trashing the whole card, I just stamped it, the uh, sentiment. It's actually out of this stamp set called So Sentimental. And then it has a coordinating set of dies that is called, I see, stitched so sweetly dies and I used this die right here for it and I just think it's 
I love these dies. So cute. I've seen some great cards with them. And so it has this, these coordinating sentiments. Um, like, I've seen this one, this sentiment right in the middle of that die cut, and I think that looks cool. I like that one a lot. But anyway, so maybe we'll use those another time. Let me put, this, put these items away. So the sentiment is from the So Sentimental stamp set, which is in the um, mini catalog, January to June mini catalog. But then it, the flowers and everything are from the Thoughtful Blooms. So let me set this over here out of my way, and we will go ahead and get started. So our the base of our card doesn't take much in, in supplies, really, in terms of cardstock. This is, um, oh, what is this called? It's a seaside spray. And this is eight and a half by five and a half, and it is just folded in half. Just, you know, it's half of an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. I'm gonna fold this in half. There we go. We have a piece of Whisper White for the front, and it is, what is that? Four by five and a quarter. Sometimes I don't always remember. Then I have a, this is off of the Bird Ballad um, Designer Series paper, and this strip is one inch wide and it'll be cut down to five and a quarter once I attach it, okay? And I think, no, we gotta do a little stamping before we attach that piece. And I'm gonna set my card base over to the side for right now. First thing we're gonna do is stamp this sentiment on this bottom part of this piece of white cardstock. So again, I'm gonna do sending healing hugs. Like I said, when I made my card initially, I did not, I used pool party and as I was progressing along, I didn't like it. So that's the way to fix it. Okay, very good. Well, I'm gonna close that up and set that on over to the side. Okay, then the next thing we're gonna do is use the the leaves, branches from the um, Thoughtful Bloom stamp set. We're gonna stamp those in Granny Apple Green. Okay, let me get my foam mat. We will be stamping off of the edge of the cardstock, so you wanna be sure that you use a piece of scrap paper on your foam mat so that you don't um, get ink on your mat because it'll absorb it and then you can transfer it to other projects. Ask me how I know. Yep, I do. And so I'm gonna ink that up and we, you know, you're gonna stamp off the edge and you're gonna want it pretty close to your um, sentiment, okay? And this is one of those things that turn well, that's okay, that'll be covered up with paper. I don't know how, where that came from. Um, this is one of those cards that turns out a little bit different every time you do it, because I never put the, you know, the leaves and the vines in the same place every time, so. Um, let's go this way, like that. Trying to get a little bit more variety. The one thing I didn't like about this card was how all the flowers kind of almost ended up in a straight line. So I was trying to get a little bit more of a variety. So there we go. That's better. And this is, see this is nice. It's gonna get covered up and so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, a little better. It's one of those things, it's, that's the great thing about stamping flowers in like a garden or something like that. There's no right, there's no wrong, because you can find everything in nature. I used Granny Apple Green for that, just because it's a bright, happy green color. And I'm going to adhere that strip of designer series paper with some glue, some Tombow glue. Ideally, I want to get this as close to the edge as possible. And then I like it a little bit longer, then I can trim it off, okay? Let's see if I can get this. 
And I like the, the Tombow because it gives me just a second to move it around. Okay. I think I will just trim here. And then I always double check to make sure I got it all the edge of the white you know right here covered up it's really easy to miss a piece and so I put a piece against something dark now this one I did really I did I did a good job I don't have any white showing sometimes I do in which case like the one I made I had a little sliver to take off I use the cute little guillotine cutter that's available for anyone who joins takes advantage of the starter kit during celebration that take I mean I take off the smallest little edge I mean, look at that. Now I know there's no white showing because I took off a little smidge of the paper and the designer series paper, the cardstock and the DSP. So anyway, I love that little thing. It's so nice. Okay, so now we are going to do some of the flowers. Um, I've got a variety of colors, as you can see. And so, oh, I know what I think I will start with first. I'm using, I'm starting out, if you can see right here, I've got in some pink, I've got some of the little bitty flowers, and then I've got these little blue ones here. So we're going to do those first. And for this, I'm using Powell Pink, and I'm just going to put it on a few of these little stems here. Um, again, no right, no wrong. It's a, it's a garden. What the heck, you know? I'm just trying to make sure it looks like everybody's got flowers on it and I can go always go back and add a few more later maybe one here it might get covered up but that's okay we can come back to that and add more if we want to Let me put that out of the way and then I'm going to do the same thing with the blue the little bit bigger flower the blue one this I'm stamping in balmy blue so, let's see here. And I may end up putting some flowers on top. You know, some of these may get hidden by the punched flowers, but that's okay. It is what it is. It's just, it's a handmade paper craft, right? So, let's see. I feel like I want to put a couple more blue ones on. I'll put one right off this edge here. Yeah, I like that. That's good for right now. Again, I may come back to that, but I will do some some of my other stamping. And so I thought I'd show you how I made some of these flowers. I've I've stamped them. I've pre-stamped them already, but I thought I'd I'd show you how some of them were made. There were some great combinations. Okay. First of all, we're gonna. I'll show you how I did the purple one. Where's my piece of? So, this is Highland Heather, and this is a great trick, especially if you don't have all the co you know colors. Like you know, there's Highland Heather, and then and then there's um, and there's Gorgeous Grape, and they're different shades, and perhaps you could use them, um, you know, together. But what I did was I stamped, this one has the ribs on it. It's the flower with the, the stripes on it. You can see that, okay? And then I took, there's another flower where it, it just fills in the color, okay? I inked it up with the same color, the same Highland Heather. Whoops, let me see here. It says I paused, so I don't know what's going on here. Let's, I'm going to re-pull it up and see what's, I don't know if I had an internet interruption or what, but anyway, so I've, I've inked it up in the same color, but I'm going to stamp off, and what that's going to do is give me a lighter shade to fill that color in with. There we go. See, that's how I got that color, and I use the same ink pad, so... It's a nice trick if you don't want to use, 
you know, have multiple. You can't, can't afford all the stamp pads in the beginning, okay? That's how I made that one. Great trick. It's That is called stamping off, so you can get a little bit lighter color. Now I'm going to clean this stamp. Let me get my um, chamois. Yep, this is our chamois. It starts out purple. Mine's mine's kind of white because I bleach it about once a month. Because it stays wet in this stamp case. But, I mean, that's kind of what it looks like after I bleached it. So, it's very satisfying when I, after I bleach it. So, I'm going to do this one here. I'm going to show you how I do this one in Calypso Coral. It's kind of the same um, technique, just backwards. I'm going to stamp off with the solid one, which I'm, which is the big image, and I'm gonna use that first. You see, like that. Except I didn't stamp off, did I? Okay, I just realized that. Okay, let me do that. And you will forget if you're making these, so. Like that. And then this is what looks kinda of like a starburst that fits really nice in the center. Of that I'm gonna use full full strength, so to speak. And that was how I made the coral flowers. Nice touch there. Okay. Let's set this over here. You see how I got one more? Oh, I've got the yellow. This is the pineapple punch and the Rococo rose. I made them the same way but I am going to show you in the Rococo Rose because it will show up better. And I need to clean off this stamp here. Before I use my chamois, I like to stamp off any ink because it just keeps this from getting dirty quite as quick. Okay, so there's my Rococo Rose. Here it is. So I'm going to stamp that. Yeah, this is the one with the, the lines on it again, the same one I started out with over here. I'm going to stamp that there. That's straight color. Then I'm taking this little small flower that's solid, inking it up. It's full strength also. And make it look like that. So it gives you, with just a few stamps, you can get a lot of variety. And there's even a couple more in the um, in the stamp set that you could use that I didn't pull out. So like I said, I already have a bunch of these um, stamped out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a second here. I'm gonna punch them out and. Sometimes it's hard to get it centered the way you want it, you know? And it's always helpful when you orient, you know, on your punch. Now this one's, this punch is pretty symmetrical. Some of them, the flower ones are not. So it's nice to orient your um, stamp on the block the same way and stamp it the same way your, your punch is oriented. Um, so that you don't have to like be twisting the paper all around and figuring out how it goes and all of that kind of stuff. So, okay. So, is anybody, does anyone do any celebrating for? You know, the Mardi Gras, sometimes people have little local Mardi Gras celebrations or things like that. I don't. I think it would be fun to go down to Mardi Gras once. I don't think I need to do it all more than once, but something I'd like to experience. Just to say. I mean, it's not going to upset me if I don't. But Okay, one more here, and we will be... I probably won't use both yellow ones, but we got to... Okay, so... Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and start putting these on. And something else you can do, too, if you want to make these flowers even bolder, is 
layer two of these, much like we did on the little box here. You know, I layered two flowers to kind of make it a little bolder. But on this one, I decided not to. I would just leave it here. So I'm going to put, I'm going to start out with, I'm going to put the little mini dimensional in the back of all of these. Where'd my mini dimensionals go? Here, here they are. This is, this is the perfect application for these mini dimensionals here. And then we're going to dress up the centers of the flowers. So, is there some, what's your, what's been your favorite product out of the celebration catalog? I'm kind of torn. I like the Honey Bee paper, although I didn't buy the Honey Bee set. I like the lilies. I like this. I don't know. What's your favorite? Let me know. Leave me a comment. For those of you just joining, welcome. Remember that if you share my video, if you like my video and decide to share it with your friends, you get a chance to win this project I'm working on. So this just might come to you next week. Whoops. And you know what? Before I put these on, I am going to attach my base. No, I'm not. I'm going to put some ribbon on here first. Um, put a piece of this. This is the Seaside Spray. What kind of ribbon? Scallop linen ribbon. Just gorgeous. Okay, I do need my glue dots. I had them out and I didn't think I needed them, so I threw them back in the drawer. I At first, when I when I put my sample together, I didn't think I needed anything. And then after I put it on, I'm just put picking up the glue dot with the ribbon. I felt like it needed something, so I added the ribbon, ribbon as an afterthought. Luckily, I was able to do that. So, let's see, let's get this lined up. And this matches the base. I love that all the Stampin' Up! colors coordinate. Seaside Spray is this is gonna be the same shade, whether it's ribbon, whether it's an embellishment, designer series paper, ink, whatever, it doesn't make any difference. They all coordinate. And it's great, because you don't have to, don't have to think. Okay, where's my card base here? And like I said, the, the great part about doing a flower type of card is just about anything goes. Okay, and you know what I did do on this um, ribbon? Where did my glue dots go? I put a couple glue dots under it because it wanted to kind of bow a little bit, so it just kept it tacked down here in a couple of places. So, we've got a really pretty kind of, I don't know, a punch. can't remember the name of it. That would be really pretty to use here, too, instead of the ribbon. Let me see. It's called, it's called the Braided Border Punch. It's on page 29. Let me find it here. I don't have it, but... Um, See, it makes this braided piece right here. And I think that would also be really pretty instead of the ribbon on this card. Okay. On to apply the flowers. Okay, what do I have here? I got a Rococo Rose. Okay. See, I want to make sure I cover up all these kind of, um, you know, junctions where they look like there's a flower supposed to be. Oops, my yellow, one of my yellow ones. That's pretty. I'm going to kind of, see, they're still going to kind of be lining up here. So I'm going to, yeah, so we're just going to put it there. We're going to, oops, I want, I want a different color. Here's one that's coral. Maybe we'll throw that one out here. Here's a purple one. We'll throw that there. There's another coral. And that could go up here doesn't really have to be attached to something. This is another Rococo Rose. This is, I like this layout a little bit better. And here's another purple one. Whoops. You know what? That's okay. They can be by each other. 
That's okay. Then I've got, if you've noticed, I've got a little embellishment on the center of each of these flowers. I've used a couple different things. I've used these Happiness Blooms enamel dots. It has th uh, three of the in colors that are going to be retiring. This is the Clover. That's the coral, this is melon mango, this is blueberry, and this is the pineapple punch. So we're gonna use one of these yellow ones on the yellow flower. If I was doing them again, I probably should have flipped those two, but again. Okay, the coral flowers, I can use these on. If you don't have these, you've got a couple other options could use just pearls or rhinestones, that would work. And if you have blends, you could use the blends to color them. You've seen me do that before. And then we're gonna do, these are some of the, yeah, that rhinestone doesn't go there. I don't know, it was stuck to it, so I just put it on the paper. These are the faceted dots for the in colors um, for 2019-2021. It's the purple posy. I've got like three packages of these and they've all got some out. This one's just about, about and these are the Rococo Rose Sunners. And I think they just add a little bit of, of interest and dimension. You know, you could also, you could curl these leaves, you know, these petals a little more if you wanted. You could use some Wink Estelle on them if you wanted. But I think, there you go. And I like this one turned out better than this one because the flowers are all scattered around a little more random. So I hope you like that um, card. If you do, um, I'd appreciate if you share my video and I might just might be sending this card out to you then next week. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight and I will see you next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for Stampin' with Denise. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Bye now.